everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Allie. And today, we're going to be talking about wigs and how to edit them in Photoshop. When you're shooting portraits, at some point, you're going to be shooting a model with a wig on. It could be a cosplayer, it could be a model that's not cosplaying, but eventually you're going to shoot somebody with a wig. With luck, it's like a nice quality wig and not one of those really cheap shiny ones, but anyway, whatever kind of wig you get, there's going to be issues. And it's important to understand how to make that wig look natural in the resulting image. So I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. And it's going to be a quick demo. I am cutting out a lot of the tedious work. So we're going to start off with Sierra. Both of the wigs I'm going to be editing are lace fronts. And lace fronts fit beautifully, but they do have that little bit of lace. And I always think it's very important to make sure that you blend it in. So let's go. Daenerys is a more complex wig, and the reason it's more complex is that Sierra's hair is darker underneath, and so some of that comes through. And, you know, she's got a beautiful lace front wig here, but lace front wigs still do show a little edge of the lace, and I like to clean that up so that it has a natural edge. I'm going to come in with my healing tool on the skin layer, and I'm just gonna start cleaning up that edge edge really needs to just blend away into the skin so it starts to look much more natural. Now sometimes when you're doing this job you're going to find things where you don't have a whole lot of skin like if you look to the side of her eyebrows so you really really need to use a small brush get in close here I'm, you've got to get in close and resample undo resample undo resample undo this is tedious work worthy of your time a tedious work and so i just keep working it you can see in a really tight spot you really really want to like use a small brush really come in there i don't want to ruin her makeup i just want to fix the wig line and so i'm coming in close and i will turn the layer on and off to make sure I can see what it looked like before I started messing with it, which is why I always do these kinds of edits on a blank layer. So I can see, okay, yep, what do I have to do? What's happening with her eyes? I don't wanna mess up her makeup. I've also noticed that you'll see some of the webbing in the hair. So what I like to do is go take my stamp tool on this hair side and just kind of work along the edges. 95% of your work is going to be along the edges and sometimes into the part. And you basically just keep stamp, sample, undo when it doesn't look right. Stamp, sample, undo when it doesn't look right. In this area, I need to get into her, that gap of hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection of some nearby hair and I'm going to Make it a messy selection. It doesn't have to be a perfect selection, but I don't want to get any, for this case, I don't want to get any of the skin. I don't want to get any of the dark hair. I'm just going to try and get a good fat swatch of hair that's a little bit bigger than the area that I want. And if I get something I don't want, I just hold down option and loop, loop that. Then I do a command J and I grab this piece and I'm going to drag this layer because I've now put my selection onto its own layer. I'm going to grab that and put it on the top layer. And now I'm going to do a command T to transform. We're going to drag it into the place. I'm going to play around with it. I almost always use warp to kind of nudge it into place. And this particular piece of hair, it was a, definitely giving me some challenges. And I really had to play with it quite a bit. I played around with lighten mode and different blend modes, but really none of them worked for what I was trying to do. I finally settled back onto normal mode. So 
So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll back up and take a better look at it from a distance so I'm not so close. And that's what I did here and I put it back into warp mode and I warped the transformation and then I was able to blend it in with the hair and I didn't need the layer mask that I had played around with before and now I can see that this is giving me a nice blend but as you can see some of her natural hair is poking through still so I'm going to add another layer and this time I'm going to use the healing tool on lighten mode because her hairs are darker than her skin and if I sample skin it's going to just put her skin over her hair and what's nice about this is that because her wig hair is darker than her skin with lighten mode I should be able to get pretty close to the edge of the wig and I'm not gonna copy hair over the wig because I'm using the lighten mode and I'm just going in there with that the cloning tool I'm not using the stamp tool and I'm just kind of cleaning up any little stray dark hairs but she's also got that gap of of light coming through so I'm gonna go back to my background layer I'm gonna make a nice selection there of some good hair and we're gonna do the same things we did before I'm going to command J to copy it and then I'm gonna drag it to the top layer so it's on top of all my other stuff command T to transform it bring it over and warp it because I warp that stuff into place and yeah you know you have to work it you have to work it and and you have to kind of play around with it and sometimes you don't get it perfect but if you can get it pretty close you can usually get it to blend in so you can usually make it work by either using a blend mode where I did that this time and I used uh, the screen mode for this and then that blended the hair nicely but I still had a little bit of a gap where the background was brighter than the hair and so then I just took another layer and started stamping hair over it and it was a lot of stamping, stamping, undo, stamp, clone, stamp, clone, stamp, undo. Um, it hits her neck, no big deal. I, I can get rid of that. I masked it off where I saw that I had a mess and this actually was masking from the layer where I had copied the hair onto. I was like, oh, I've got a mess here. So really, this is what you do. This is how you fix a wig so that, and part of this part, what I'm showing you here, is also how you fix hair, because regular hair can make these gaps too. And you usually wanna clean those gaps up. And then when you're done, you've got a lot, a, a much more natural look, and it doesn't look so much like a wig anymore. It looks much more like her natural hair. Okay, so that's the first wig. And um, I hope you've learned something, but like the big thing is your left hand is gonna be on that option, command C, option, command C, option, command C, memorize this. If you've got a Windows machine, I think it's Alt instead of option. I, I, sorry, I only edit on a Mac, but option, command Z, or basically sample, sample, undo, 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 sample, undo, sample, undo. And now we're gonna go ahead and edit Natalie's wig. Natalie's wig was a special challenge because of the fact that it was a braided wig, so it was an updo, and in that kind of wig you also have a situation where there's this little bit of hair that there's just like no really good way to build a wig that's gonna cover that little bit of hair. So I show how I deal with it in Photoshop. This wig was a lot more complicated because of the braids and because this is common in this kind of wig, it, it just, you can't make the wig go over, the, like I guess you could make flaps, but the flaps are probably gonna pop up. So her natural hair is kind of coming in in front of the ears and that's not a problem when you're editing. And so what I did with this one is first I found her stray hairs that are darker that were kind of coming out over her hair, over her skin, and I just cleaned those babies up with the, uh, with the cloning tool. And you know, you just kind of clean it up and then I would go in using the cloning tool and and go into between the hairs with a tiny little brush, getting in nice and close and just cleaned that up and then kept cleaning up the edge. 
because you got to get your edges cleaned up. Your edges and that webbing, with the edges especially, are a dead giveaway that you did not edit the wig line. And so that's critical for this kind of look. Now, when I got to the braid side, I went to a full stamping tool and I, I cleaned up the skin and now I started stamping braids back down onto the skin because the braids aren't going to have a perfect line, so I've got to copy the roots of the braids back down so that way I'm getting a more natural hairline. And I really, really, really like to get in there, I mean, and just really clean up the hairlines. That's just how I am. Um, I know that a lot of this, I, I go and clean this up and then I, I'll, I copy a braid on top of it anyway, but I think it's just the details are so important. So take the time and like, see, I kind of clean it up and then I stamp a braid on top and that gives a much more natural look. So now we need to get in to where this little piece of hair is front of her ears. And the easiest way to do that is the same is for, well, first thing I want to do is see how she's got some stray hairs on the outside of her ear and that wouldn't be there with, with the braids. So I clean that up and just clean those flyaways up because they'd be a telltale sign if you had those flyaway hairs popping out behind the piece of the ear. And then once I've got that all cleaned up, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select a section of the braid, copy it down, and warp it. And also, just like before, when I make the copy, I always put that layer on the very top. That way it's on top of all my other adjustments. And then I drag it into place, kind of move it around, warp it, line. Warp is a great way to get the hairs and the texture to line up too because stuff happens and, you know, hair isn't too hard to, to normally to blend. Some hair is harder than others. I think straight hair might be a little trickier, but this is pretty textured and pretty simple. And you just get that all nice and lined up. And then of course, I have to do the same thing to the other side because I want to be sure that she looks good and that it's even. Even though the other side is a little bit darker and honestly, I could probably have gotten away with not doing it. I know, I know that it's not done and I'm gonna make sure it's done. So I also do the other side. And from here, it's done, and I'm ready to continue the rest of my edits on this image. Okay, so that's Natalie's wig, and you could see a lot of the different techniques that I used to get that wig to blend and look natural. So these are the things you wanna take away from this particular tutorial. First of all, why do you want to go through all this? Because honestly, I probably spent a good 20 minutes on each one of those editing them. If you want your work to look professional, the details are what's going to set you apart from everybody else. Photography is my passion. This isn't about the fact that it was a fun free shoot amongst friends and so why should I put a bunch of effort into it when I didn't get any money for it? No, that's not what this is about. This is about the fact that my energy, my vision went into this shoot and I'm going to make sure that the quality reflects that passion that I have. And I just want you to take away a few things from this. First, you're gonna be switching between the healing brush and the stamping tool. The healing brush takes the texture of where you're at and kind of blends it with the colors. And that is why sometimes you'll get smudges. So it's not always good to use along edges or where you have a really distinct texture. It's great on skin, it's great in shadows. The stamp brush is gonna make an exact uh, clone, an exact duplicate of what you sampled. And, and if you're not careful with the stamp tool, you're going to get repeating patterns. So that's why I switch back and forth constantly. 
The keyboard shortcut is S for the stamp tool, J for the cloning tool, and it'll always pick up the last cloning tool that you used. So you're gonna sample, you're gonna fix, sample, fix, sample, fix. You're gonna zoom in, you're gonna zoom out. You're gonna zoom in, you're gonna zoom out. You're gonna be undoing a lot because it's trial and error. No two weights are the same. And when you're doing the areas where there's a large amount of hair, you can go down to your background layer, copy a section, paste it, move it, transform it. I almost always wore pair. And those are my tips. So I hope they help. And I hope that you will now be editing your wigs if you weren't already, because I think it really does give a much more professional look. If this has been helpful for you, please give it a like. Subscribe for more tips and leave some comments because I share what I think is useful. And if somebody says, hey, I really think this would be useful, I'm likely gonna share it or try, if it's something I know, I'll share it with you. I, I think art is all about helping each other. So thank you for watching and bye-bye.